we are very pleased to have with us on set tonight, Mr. Mark Keefe with American Rifleman. Mark, how you doing, sir? Doing great, Cam. How are you? Hey, I'm very good. Uh, now, this is, I've got to guess, uh, at least as busy uh, as the NRA annual meetings for you. I, I can't even imagine what your schedule must look like. You, you know, it's the worst week of my life, but, <laughs> but, but one of the best weeks of my life as well. There's a lot of uh, friends of mine in the firearms industry. There's a lot of people I know here. And, of course, this is this is where I figure out what American Rifleman is doing for the next year. Yeah. So, so it's my 19th. Uh, so wow. It's not quite Groundhog Day, but it, it sure feels like it with new guns. <laughs> yeah. It's all right. So you were out at the range today. Um, you had a chance to uh, do a lot of shooting? Uh, a little bit. Uh, yes, some. Um, basically, you know, I was out there with the AmericanRifleman.org uh, mm-hmm. video crews, and I was picking out the guns that I was interested in. Right. Because they, they have plenty of other people for guns I'm, I'm not interested <laughs> in. And uh, so we hit some highlights and, uh, you know, shot a few hundred, maybe, you know, maybe a thousand rounds. I don't know. Nice. But, you know, there's, uh, there's a lot of new guns this year in a lot of different categories. The, uh, the, one of the most interesting was the Springfield XDS. Uh, thankfully, they, they used the name that I suggested, uh, which is, is small. <laughs> and this is the first single stack uh, Springfield XDM. And it's 45 ACP, less than an inch wide, five shot. Nice little gun, polymer frame, good sights. Uh, I was I was really impressed. I was I was surprised about how good that little gun is, and, it, and you can hold on to it. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there's there has there's been a lot of interest in concealed carry firearms, mm-hmm. um, and different makers take different approaches. Today we saw the uh, Sig 224. Uh, of course, I have one back at the office. I've been, you know, it's on our next cover. Sure. You know, it's it, it's not like I have to find out about things at Shot Show, <laughs> right? Unless you're a publicly traded company that can't. Talk to me on the record. And um, you're starting to see people interested in more magazine capacity. And uh, the SIG 224 is basically, it's a 228 that uh, they didn't really just run a bandsaw, you know, through the guns. Right. Uh, but they, they deliberately made it uh, more compact. It's shorter uh, by like a half an inch. or No, it's shorter by like almost an inch. And then, wow. and then the, uh, no, it's a half inch and then by an inch. So it's a 10, 10 shot or 12 shot, uh, depending on which magazine it is. Okay. So concealed Gary guns are very hot. Uh, affordable guns are very hot. I, I don't know if you knew this, but uh, the president hasn't been helping the economy. <laughs> you know, we've, we've, we've heard a couple of things about yeah, this. Yeah. yeah, you know, if you read the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> right. And, so uh, one of the most exciting guns for me was the Ruger American Rifle. And, uh, of course, Ruger with the, with the Million Gun Challenge, which is very exciting. You know, Mike Pfeiffer, uh, he decided that, you know what, we're going to sell a million guns this year. For every gun we sell, we're going to give a dollar to the NRA. And they are on track. They are wow. actually ahead of schedule. And uh, thanks, everybody, for buying Rugers. And, but th- this new rifle, it's, it's kind of a game changer in the affordable bolt-action rifle market. And uh, it's got a lot of good features. It's going to retail for, well... It, I think the retail on it is like three ninety nine, but I think it's going to sell for like three hundred bucks. Oh my gosh! It's got a hammer forged barrel. It's got a good magazine. It 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 it's uh, kind of like the Browning X Bolt magazine, yeah. which is ironic because the guy who designed the Browning X Bolt magazine now works for Ruger. <laughs> uh, it's got uh, 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 the Ruger adjustable marksman trigger, which is ironic because you know one of the guys who was work at Savage, works at Ruger now. <laughs> and um, I don't know if you see a pattern developing here, but Ruger also has good inherent uh, engineering talent. And what they did is they, they, they took all of the great features of affordable rifles, yeah. and they put them all together. They put it in a, a just horrendously ugly but ergonomically excellent stock. Uh, just You look at the stock and you're like... Oh, God. But you throw it to your shoulder, everything's there. Right. And the guns shoot really, really well. And uh, it's all made up in Newport, New Hampshire. And I was just up at the plant, and I had a look at how they're building those guns. And, they're, they're, again, there's some themes. Good concealed carry guns, mm-hmm. you've seen a lot of them. Uh, affordable guns, and then 22s. 22s are very hot right now. It, that, that's been the case for the past couple of years, I think, right? I mean, uh, you know, you go back to, what was it, 20, 2009 when, like, the M&P 1522 came out? Yeah, well, this is when they showed it, but right. then they started delivering them, too. But that's another matter. Okay. The, the, uh, the, the thing about 22 Long Rifle is it's very affordable. Right. They, they make billions, with a B, billions, of rounds of 22 Long Rifle every year. And you can go to Walmart, which I do, uh, uh, I actually buy ammunition sometimes. I don't know if you knew that. I, I, I'm actually kind of shocked by that. Well, you know, sometimes... I learn something new every time we have yeah, you on. Yeah, Well, sometimes it's easier for me to just go to Walmart and grab one of the cartons. And if I'm ever going to be on a milk carton, I want it to be 547 rounds of Federal 22 long <laughs> rifle. That's the milk carton I want to be on. 
And uh, I shoot a lot with my kids. And uh, these tactical 22s are really a lot of fun. They, they look like full-size guns. They're great for training. And they're just fun to shoot. Yeah. And Umarex. Uh, can you say that? Umarex? Umarex. Umarex. Very good. Uh, has, has, they're, they're, they're part of Carl, uh, Carl Walther is owned by Umarex. And they've been doing a lot of guns. They've been licensing with other people. And it started off with the HK-22s. Mm-hmm. And they've got the MP5, which I'm, I'm negotiating right now, the okay. Marquise price on this gun, because I have 6,000 rounds through it, and it's really dirty. And uh, But it looks like an MP5 SD with a can on it. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's fun because you can afford to shoot it all day, and you still get to go, Shh! you know, you just slap the charging handle, and you get to shoot it. Right. But um, they also uh, have a licensing deal with Colt, and they have a uh, government model, 22. It's going to be the next issue of American Rifleman. And it's a full-size 1911, but it's a 22 long rifle. Holds 12 rounds. Feels great in the hand. And it shoots almost everything. I, I, I really wanted to make this gun just, you know, spill its guts and, yeah. and not work. But it, it works great. Really? And I've had my kids shooting it, some friends of mine shooting it. I've been shooting it. Uh, then the other thing that the Umarex guys are doing is the, uh, the, the Uzi Carpy. Oh, really? Yeah. In 22 long rifle? In 22 long rifle. Yeah. You know, it's got everything. It's, it's, it's got the, the, it, the, the look and the feel of the Uzi, except it looks like it has a can on it. Yeah. You know, it's really awkward when you have to put a 16 inch barrel on something that's not supposed to have a 16 inch barrel. Right. And, uh, so they, they put a fake can on it. I mean, it's just a barrel liner, uh, and then, uh, a housing. And I shot the thing today, and it was really, really fun. It's got a grip safety. The safety works the same way. Bolts on the top. Pretty accurate. I was dinging a plate, you know, having a good time with it. And the shoulder stock, you know, you squeeze it, and you clamp it, and you do all those things that you do on an Uzi carbine. Yeah. And uh, it, it, just a kick in the pants to shoot. And, and the thing is, is, shooting these 22s, the full-size 22s, it's fun. And it's affordable. Right. So you spend a little more money up front to buy one of these really cool 22s as opposed to the bargain basement, you know, 22. And you, you can actually afford to shoot it. You look at, you know, what 100 rounds of 9 millimeters is going to cost you and what 500 rounds of 22 is going to cost you. And you can actually get out to the range and shoot and have a really good time. That's incredible. I, you know, I, and I, are, are you seeing, uh, you talked about concealed carry guns becoming very popular. I've got to guess with a lot of the new gun owners, uh, they're looking for the carry gun, and then maybe their second purchase is going to be that 22 long rifle when they start to realize, okay, well, i got to go out to the range, but, man, ammo is kind of expensive. When they figure out, all right, this is what I can shoot for, for my training, uh, that's when they go to that, uh, the, the 22 yeah, models? You know, it's funny. Yes, sometimes. You know, um, uh, Ruger actually uh, came out with the, uh, the Ruger LCR 22, mm-hmm. which is uh, the, uh, the light white compact revolver. It's their polymer frame revolver. And uh, it's, it's just like an LCR in 38 or 357, except it's 22 long rifle. And what I didn't know, and, and I've suspected it, but I, it, I hadn't really confirmed it, is there are people despite all the advice of gun writers yeah. who know everything from my dad, <laughs> um, that uh, carry 22s for personal protection. And, uh, you know, it's not my first choice because, you know, I, I, I get a deal when I buy that. I'll admit that. <laughs> and, uh, but a lot of people are very recoil shy. And, uh, you know, North American Arms sells a lot of the little mini revolvers. Mm-hmm. And uh, other companies have figured out that some people are carrying 22s for personal protection. And, you know, I don't necessarily recommend it, but it's, you know, it's better than having a sharp stick. Well, obviously. Absolutely. And um, so people are, are very interested in 22 LR from affordability and also from the recoil perspective. Because we, uh, I've seen time and time again, you get some idiot and he takes his girlfriend out for the first time and he hands her, you know, a Smith & Wesson, like 629 lightweight titanium frame. Right. And, and she almost, you know kills herself with the hammer on the forehead, and he thinks it's really funny, but you, you, uh, you've you ruined that person for shooting. So if you want to take somebody out shooting, you want to introduce them to the shooting sports, 22 long rifle is perfect. It's affordable. There's no recoil, and uh, it, 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 it shows how much fun shooting really is. And I think, I think that's part of what we're seeing is the fun of shooting mm-hmm. and the affordability of 22 long rifle. And to be frank, I like doing it. I mean, I'll go out to my cabin with my kids, yeah. and, you know, on the way out, I'll stop by – you know, a, a large big box store. Right. And, you know, for 40 bucks worth of ammo, we can shoot all day. Yeah. Yeah, and, no, I think you're absolutely right. Yeah, I don't know if you saw, I think it was CBS News did a piece eh, maybe three weeks or so uh, ago talking about the uh, women uh, gun owners. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you talk about the fun factor. 
all of the women that they talked to uh, talked about how just how fun it was to go to the range. There was a woman who I think she was like a yoga instructor, uh, and then she worked at a vegan bakery. Uh, awesome. Not not exactly who you would think of, you know, as a stereotypical gun owner. And she talked about how the, the similarities between yoga and meditation and mm-hmm. shooting and how relaxing it was and how she just loved to go out there. And, you know, seeing things like that make me feel very, very good about the future, not only of this industry, but but of our right to keep and bear arms. Yeah, you know, it's it's funny. The uh, Obviously, women in particular, if you uh, give them good instruction, and uh, I can tell you, I've, I've taught a lot of people over the years, ranging from, you know, men in their 70s down to, you know, Boy Scouts to women. And it's funny that women are, uh, they take direction well mm-hmm. because, you know, most guys, they, they've watched cop sitcom or cop uh, docudramas and they, they you know, they, they, and, they, and they know, you know, they know what to do. Right. They don't want to listen to you. And it's a, it, it, shooting is a skill. It requires mastery. And the, 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 the speed at which women master shooting uh, with good instruction is far faster than men because they don't have bad habits and they're willing to take good advice. And um, it's, it's also empowering, you know, because this is something that doesn't matter how big you are, how strong you are. This is a skill that you can master. Yeah. And it's a skill that, you can save, that can save your life. Absolutely. You know, we, were, we kicked off the show with uh, Dustin Elliman, uh, who won Top Shot. Uh, and we were just kind of going through all of the, the shows that we're now seeing, not just on what we would think of as, as the, you know, the, the traditional homes of these shows, but History Channel, Discovery Channel. And it seems like every, every week we're hearing about another show featuring either shooting, firearms manufacturers, you know, the, uh, the gun makers, the gun sellers. Do, are, are you seeing this? I mean, do you think that this yeah. is part of the mainstreaming of, of gun ownership over well, the last few here's years? Here's the problem is uh, firearms ownership has always been mainstream America. And you, you, you look at New York, you look at Hollywood, and uh, they're all about ratings. They're all about numbers. And uh, to be frank, Cam, they, 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 Hollywood and New York have missed men, especially men in their 30s and 40s. And what are men interested in? They're interested in, well, to be honest, guns. And now that, of course, after the Heller decision, after the McDonald decision, maybe guns are okay. Mm-hmm. And, and, and ratings are really good. Ratings are apparently important to television. <laughs> I've uh, heard that. Well, I've been on American Rifleman Television on Outdoor Channel for 12 years, and that's what I'm told. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, what they found is people are very interested in shooting. They're very interested in guns. They're very interested in the gun culture. I was talking to a friend of mine uh, who is involved in probably – you know, according to the new formula, the most successful show to come because Louisiana is hot yeah. and guns are hot. And it's called uh, Cajun Pawn and they have an FFL. So you're going to get guns and Louisiana all in the same program. I, you know, I was just reading something about yeah. this show. I think they just announced it last week, right? Yeah, it's been. Uh, uh, Bruce has been telling me about it. Bruce Canfield, our, one of our field editors, oh, is yeah. one of the experts on. But you look at Pawn Oh, he, Stars. Bruce is going to be Oh, yeah, Bruce is going to be on it. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, which, is, yeah, which is awesome. Uh, but you look at Pawn Stars, they do antique firearms in yep. there, and they always have to shoot it. Uh, you look at uh, Mythbusters. Mythbusters, they, are, they, they, have, they have just rendered guns into what they are. They're mechanical objects and part of science. Mm-hmm. Uh, you look at uh, uh, American Gun uh, with Rich, and I'm supposed to meet with Rich this week. You look at, uh, of course, uh, Sons of Guns. I'm meeting with Will Hayden this week. Uh, and I think it's, it's very important that our media outlets have realized finally – that guns are mainstream America. Yeah. A lot of Americans own guns. It's, 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 it's part of our lives. It's part of our culture. And they just completely missed it for years. You know, History Channel did uh, Tales of the Gun. Right. And uh, it was very successful. And they kept moving the time slot. They kept giving it worse and worse and worse time slots. And it continued to do well. And it just it perplexed the executives at the History Channel. They just had no idea what to do with the show. <laughs> and then uh, uh, with Top Shot. Uh, you know, History Channel, I talked to the executive producer uh, a couple of times as the show was in development. Right. And then after it aired, and of course, Ian Harrison's a good friend of mine who now works at the Crimson Trace, which I find terribly amusing. Uh, and he's also quite a competitor. I mean, he's up in this three-gun finale thing that's happening on Wednesday. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's funny. My, 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 my oldest son uh, will watch Top Shot with me. I'll let him stay up till 11, you know, wow. which is a big deal. Yeah, it is a big deal. Yeah. And uh, he'll look at me and he'll go, do you know Dustin? 
I'm like, you know, I, I, I don't. I haven't met him yet. I, I, and um, I just I met Dustin for the first time tonight, I, and uh, he'll be excited. I should have got my picture with him, you know, because uh, a guy on Top Shot's way more famous than I am. So oh, I, I, Yeah, me too. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's just one of those things. Yeah. But you know what? It's good for – I think it's, it's actually good for us in a way. No, it's great for us because, you know – we shoot. We hunt. We guns are a part of our lives. You know, we use them safely. We use them responsibly. And here you have um, uh, mainstream broadcast cable television saying, "You know what? Look at these people. You want to look at their lives? Guns are a part of their lives. And you know what? Nobody's getting shot. Right? People are using them safely, and they're 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 a part of their business. They're a part of their lives. It's part of what they do for fun, for recreation. And you know what?" I'm not seeing a downside here. Yeah, you know, and, and you know, it's not just the it's not just that there are guns on on these shows, but there are gun owners, and, and right. you know, we. I mean, you know this as well as I do. Uh, you know, in the mainstream media and in the in the world of journalism, uh, there are a lot of folks who who want to malign mm -hmm. gun owners. Sure. And so for people to be able to see guys like Dustin, uh, Will Hayden on Sons of Guns, the, uh, the the cast at Pawn Stars who are just, you know, out there having a ball, <laughs> Adam Savage and, you know, Jamie Heineman from Mythbusters, showing normal people uh, and, and smart people, funny people, but real individuals who are also gun owners, I, I think is... I, I I I don't know what kind of impact it has, but I've got to think it's it's huge. Yeah, when you when you think that Sons of Guns, uh, when it aired last week, I was just talking to uh, a lady from Discovery. Mm. Uh, it won its slot for non sporting event. I think there's some basketball on. Yeah. Uh, for men. On cable. Wow. Number, number one show. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what do people want to want? They want to be entertained. Obviously, mm -hmm. that's what television is all about. It's what magazines are about. It's what you're about. You, you want to entertain people. You want to pass on information. But, you know, these shows are successful because there, there, there are people in New York and in Hollywood, executives, they know nothing about guns. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't really care about guns. It's not part of their life. Right. But they, want, they like ratings. And our people, you know, people who are mainstream, heart of America— who use guns every day, they're, they're a part of their lives. And when they see it on television, it's something that they want to watch because it's something that they can relate to. And they're being entertained at the same time. Yeah. And it's the ratings that uh, the executive producers really, really like. And guess what? Guns are, guns are delivering it. Absolutely. Hey, we're almost out of time for this segment, Mark. But before we go, I want to ask you, uh, you know, obviously 2012 is going to be a very busy uh, political year. I'm curious. You know, last year we saw a record number of Knicks checks uh, I don't know how many firearms were sold, but it sure sounds like there were a bunch of them. Do you think that that trend is going to continue this year? You know, I do. Uh, you know, the firearms industry, they uh, are very dependent on external conditions. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, obviously, with the election of President Obama, it's like, boom, banner years. You can be an idiot at a gun company and not have a record <laughs> year. Uh, but what, what I like right now is that the people in the firearms industry, the people in charge generally, are, are making good decisions about the kind of products that people want to buy. And there's an increased interest in firearms. Mm -hmm. I think there's a threat that, that is out there every day that Barack Obama is in the White House. Uh, but at the same time, you make products that people want to buy, people are going to buy them. Yeah. And uh, so I, I'm, I'm convinced that the management of the gun companies are doing the right things these days, generally. There's some mm. idiots, obviously. I won't <laughs> disclose them on your show or anywhere else. But, the, the, but they're making good decisions. And there's interest out there. And I think in, the interest continues to grow. And uh, I don't know if we'll see the panic buying that we saw in, uh, in previous years. But there are people that, you know what, now is the time that I need an AR-15. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there are guys that I've known for years. They, they call me up and I'm like, which AR-15 should I buy? Well, what do you want to use it for? It's like, well, if things get really bad, like, okay, well, buy this model. And, uh, you know, don't buy this, don't buy that, but make sure you have plenty of ammo. So, yeah. you know, but there's uh, there, there's an undercurrent there that I'm not sure I quite understand yet, Cam. Right. Well, we'll uh, hopefully be able to figure it out uh, together as the year goes on. Mark, thank you again for coming on the program. I know you're a very busy guy, uh, especially this time of year. And uh, it's great having you, sir. Love to have you back whenever we can. Great. Always a pleasure, Cam. Thanks thank you so much. Mark, keep joining us from American Rifleman.